Tony, you remember when I said to you last week, um, oh, I'm at this point of no return on Ghost Ride Tokyo. I'm not sure how far through it I am, but I yep. uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a new area I need to go to. Turns out I'm at, I was at the end of the game, uh, pretty much. <laughs> right. Um, so I said I might give an update on um, my thoughts after completing the game. Uh, but also... I went back and I played Spider's Thread. So I think maybe like a year after release or something like that, um, Tango Work Games went and they... Uh, oh, let's just skip forward. Um, Tango Work Games went and added this roguelite mode, basically. So it's like that they've condensed Ghostwire Tokyo down into these like little small like, little mission maps with these these spider web things and i i assume there's some sort right. of procedural generation going on here um but yeah i tried this out and i thought it was it was pretty good pretty all right i think um with ghostfire tokyo um going off my thoughts of last week i still adore the movement in this game the atmosphere and the setting and all of yeah. the weird japanese yeah. demons i think it is like a um like a four out of a five for me. I think I would have liked the story to be longer. I think I played like um, maybe like 15, 20 hours, something like that. And I did uh, like quite a few side quests to get the Makatama to upgrade my abilities. But yeah, I just wanted some of the best stuff in this game was inside the main story missions where it's like, oh, you're not just going around collecting spirits. You're going to... Some weird fucking shit's going to happen. You're going to go into a portal to another dimension. And I, right, I wish there was like more of that. Up play. Yeah. 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 But I think that the, the base game is so solid that I could recommend this to almost everybody. I think it's really good. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, I think my takeaway is like we said before, it's like it seems a very mixed reception. But yeah, like looking at like... I think it was mixed when it came out because it was so different to what Tango's done in the past. You think and that was a... I, it? Well, I think it's like very positive now on Steam. I think it's... Okay. I think okay. as time's gone on, people have gone back and replayed this and be like, actually, this game's pretty solid. It's um, very interesting. It's an interesting phenomenon, I suppose, of that, that happening. So I think that, that happens a lot, though, I think, when yeah. games come out, that usually there's more um, negative sentiment for new stuff, and then it becomes more positive as people get a chance to really try it out. I think I think as well, like, um, like people have their own ideas of what the advertising was, like, meant to be showing. Yeah. So it's like, they have to, like, oh, it's not what I thought it would be. It's like, yeah, but... Well, if you, it, I think... It, it still might not be for you, but can you at least give it a chance? Well, if you looked at this game advertising, you were like, oh, I want a super fast-paced, clutch, 120 hertz FPS that's going to be yeah. constant action. That's not this game. It is no. a lot of flying around Tokyo collecting spirits interspersed with... And um, talking with cats. <laughs> talking with cats, stealth elements. Um, right. Yeah, uh, it's very open world. It has that very that concept of going around to these maca. Uh, what not makatama? What are they called? Um, uh, to to I, I'm gonna fuck this up because these are all Japanese words. Tori, Tori gates. Uh, oh, which are like these? Yes, yeah. They are like these traditional japanese gates that are symbolized transitioning from the physical world into the spiritual world and stuff like that right um but yeah but the main basis of this is you go in um as you go through the levels you collect gold and then you can spend this on the shop here with the giant cats in the upside down loki world and um you can also get these things called spider webs and spider webs let you upgrade your prayer beads and you can also upgrade your skills. And basically, as you progress, uh, it's sort of set up like a rogue uh, light rather than a rogue like. So basically, as you unlock skills and upgrade your prayer beads, those are permanent. But any gold you have on your run is um, lost when you die. And the idea is trying to make it to the end. Um, I gave it a go. Right. I think I just did one run and I was like, yeah, that was pretty fun. But I'm kind of going to try something else now because I've already beat the game. Uh, recently, and then I was like, "Oh, I'll try this out." And I'm like, "Yeah, you could grind that, so but I've got another roguelike game." Story 
There's no story limit attached to that, then? Is no, like, not that I could see. Stuff. Okay. Because I, 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 so this, like, was, this was added as a later update, and I think it was yeah. just... I think it was it's like an update simple. to maybe the Xbox Series X version. I think... Right. I don't... Wait, I think this was one of the last holdovers of the Bethesda Microsoft acquisition was that Ghostwire Tokyo had already been confirmed as a PS5 exclusive. And I believe oh, okay. um, they were adding it to the Xbox Series X as under Microsoft. So they wanted to be like, yeah. hey, it's coming to Xbox, it's, but it's not just going to be the same game again. We're going to add yeah, bonus yeah. content I'd, to get people to want to yeah. play it on Xbox, I, right? I was just thinking, like, because obviously, like, we've seen with Rogue Lights, like, obviously, like, you, you have progression outside of the, the run. So, like, maybe it's like, that's a good place to add story. So. Yeah, I mean, the best game for really doing do that, that is. I mean, after playing Hades, you kind of wish every yeah, yeah, roguelite yeah. had like a, yeah. this if, big overarching like, stories to it. Yeah, if if you've got a roguelite, add something. Yeah, add something else to it. That'd be nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's thought, different, different, different. I thought it was just pretty fun. There was like different challenges on different levels. So some levels were like, if you get to the exit gate in this amount of time, then we'll give you bonus money. So there was like speed run stuff, and then there's like. A checklist you can basically do like defense missions it's sort of more of the same if you like the mechanics of the base game it it sort of just puts it into a container that's infinitely repeatable i would say um okay. so just like i did encounter just like i think it was this level here i was like so these trees here you can destroy their core which lets you get rid of the corrupted ground but i kept running around trying to figure out how to get to the exit, but I couldn't get to the exit without going through these corrupted trees and there was no way to destroy them. The corrupted core from the side I was on. So I had to like wade through the corruption and take a bunch of damage. Oh, here you can see me stealth killing these guys. Yeah, you can you can still do your stealth mechanics in this, in this version. So I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem like it's supposed to be like that. I'm wondering if, I don't actually know if these are procedure generated, I assume they are. But I feel like that may be like a limitation of the procedural generation was that some levels you're just going to have to take a bunch of damage for no reason because of the way that they they get set up. The tiles get right. smashed together. I don't know. So the logic um, for like creating the exit isn't quite foolproof enough to yeah, have like a, um, a damageless exit. Let me look it up. Generation... I was wondering, like, did this, this, it, so there's no mystery behind the spiderweb stuff? Like, because obviously there's a, there's a bit at the start. Is there, um... Uh, so look. Did it, did it just get explained to you? I think that there is much story. If there is, I completely missed it, but... Okay. Um... Because I only did it once, so I actually have no idea if they're procedural. Because I went over here and I was like, oh, why can't I destroy the core of the um, the tree? There's, th no there's 30 levels of trials. The levels are not procedure generated. They are crafted to test the player's skill. Okay, I guess I just suck then. Oh, there's skill guess, challenges. Yeah, I guess, I guess I was supposed to wade through the corruption. But yeah. Um, it's interesting going back after completing the game. It's like, because you, as you play through it, you unlock different abilities. Um quickly in whatever order you choose and i now have a different appreciation for what abilities i like early game it's like oh the game's a lot more playable oh it's spirit thread is the name of the stuff you collect right um in order to upgrade your beads and stuff like that but yeah i have a i have a better understanding of like early game stuff and i thought i was just going to tell it to my friend who's also was playing this game and was not very far in it. He was like, oh, you have to give me some tips when I play it. And I was like, yeah, but it, it was useful to have that knowledge now after playing the main game, but like, oh, I can actually put this into this roguelite mode and decide what sort of stuff's important to me early on sort of thing, which is cool. Um, yeah. I want to see Ghostwire Tokyo too. I think this game's fucking sick. I want it to be longer. I want bigger budget. I think Ghostwire Tokyo too was actually on the leaked list of games um, from that Microsoft oh, really? leak. Yeah. Oh, nice. So uh, very excited if yeah. they decide to go through with that. Um, yeah. And my, my notes it's would weird be... And wacky. It, make it <laughs> more. more weird shit. Expand the story. Yes. Um, yep. But yeah. Have like, I, I don't know. I don't... Is there like a giant twist without spoiling? Like, is there a giant twist to expect? Or is like, 
I don't. Giant it's twist. Like a massive mystery. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's not. It's pretty straightforward. The story, I would say. Okay. Okay. It's like there's an evil spirit guy, and you want to defeat the evil spirit guy. His, okay. his without spoiling anything, I guess. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, I'm just curious, like how the vague structure of the story was. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Ghost right. Tokyo Let's Fox, and uh, yeah, it's a really cool game. Yeah. And then next up, I'm going to turn the sound down preemptively, Tony, because this is going to be loud. Tony, I played one of my favorite games, TF2. Um, oh, I don't know. Two. So, I don't know if you know, but um, they actually added a zombie infection mode to TF2 based on the community game mode as an official game mode. So that with the last summer update they did... Uh, where they added like um, the the seal map, or um, they added the official Saxton Hale. Um, they added the official Saxton Hale gamer. One person plays as a super powerful Saxton Hale, and all the mercenaries have to come together to try and kill them. Um, but basically, in this game mode, it's basically like if you've ever played a Source game, you've played Zombie uh, Infection, or if you've played Halo, you know how Zombie Infection works, right? Um, at the start of the round. Uh, one random player, a couple of random players get infected, and um, oh, you can see my Halloween cosmetics I've got on there. The uh, right. the lollipop liquor. So you see the Halloween icon there. Um, yeah. In TF2, the way the cosmetics work is when you play the game in on um, Halloween, you can unlock these um, free loot crates. Basically, they don't have require a key. And you open them up and they give you a random Halloween item. And those Halloween items can only be worn on the uh, month of Halloween, so for October, throughout Scream Fortress. Or if it's a full moon outside. Um, yeah. So, so once a month, maybe twice a month if you get the yeah. blue moon. Which I think is a nice way of doing it. It's like, hey, we're a free yeah. to play game. We make money on cosmetics. Like, but we can have some like free ones that you can earn during Halloween. Yeah. I always yeah. like to load up TF2 on Halloween to check out the new Screen Fortress content just because I love TF2. Um, but I wanted to check out um, this new zombie infection game mode because they have taken the I be, this is the uh, community one and uh, I don't know if they've added these passives or abilities to it because I, I never really played the TF2 version, um, but I have played like the Counter-Strike version with the just normal... You attack someone and they immediately turn into a zombie. On this one, right. you have like a health bar and then the class you pick is very important because each class has an ability or a passive. Um, so like, for right. example, I'm playing Pyro here. If I get turned into a zombie, um, whenever I at uh, attack an enemy with my hands, they'll get set on fire and take damage over time. Or, at, or like, um, for example, the Demo Man, um, he has an ability. So when he can basically... He becomes invulnerable for a couple of seconds. He charges at you and then he blows himself up. So he's sort of like a, a suicide cool. bomber in a way, you know? Like yeah. you see here, this is what he's doing. He's he's invincible. Oh, he charges, then he blows okay. up. Right. Um, what are some other cool ones? I thought, okay, so you can build turrets. And I thought, oh, okay, the spy will be able to uh, get a sapper to take out buildings. No, the engineer is the spy in this game mode as a zombie. So um, the engineer throws his sapper... Um, and it basically destroys buildings as it goes. And that's kind of that's kind of like monumental like TF2 canon stuff because um, I don't know if you know this, but in the Meet the Spy video, the spy yep. throws his he no, he throws his sapper at the yep. engineer's um, turret, and it never occurs in the game until now, but through the engineer in the zombie infection game mode, which so, I think is hilarious. So what does Spy get in the infection then? Um, you can go invisible. So you can like sneak up on people and then you have your knife still, which is like a one hit kill. Uh, so basically you're just trying to like sneak up on people. I don't think I played every... Snipe... Sniper... Snipe... So I like how they have like similarities to the other classes. Like Demo Man's... Uh, to, they have similarities to almost like Left 4 Dead char uh, zombie characters where the Demo Man's kind of a boomer and a charger put together. Um... The uh, the sniper is actually kind of um, he's a spitter. Um, so you throw this green gerati on the floor, which deals damage over time. So you're like the spitter from Left 4 Dead, um, right. which is pretty cool. 
Um, heavy is basically just a tank. He's just he gets more health. Um, who else was there that I can remember? Um, I played medic for a bit. I don't remember what happened when I so when I turned some to a zombie. Some of these sound more some of these sound more interesting than others. Yeah, some, some of them are just passive. Like the yeah, the pyro and the heavy are just passives. It's like you heavy's tankier and pyro can set people on fire, well, right? I still think that I still think the pyro one is the most interesting passive though. I think that's 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 fine to me. It's just the other stuff. Like, oh, we're doing the. the uh, seems. I just oh, love okay, yeah. I love the TF2 community, man. Just like yeah. dancing around random people. I got I was playing like a couple of weeks ago, and I got the achievement for doing a conga line with ten people. We were all just <laughs> we were supposed to be pushing the payload, but instead we just walked out of spawn against the enemy team as a giant conga line. Like we're, we're, there's zombies attacking us, and I'm just dancing. Uh, that's that's TF2. Like just that's happy, something just, it, it, that's something you would that's something you would never get in some like a new like in Counter Strike. Um, yeah. Counter Strike Two. You're never gonna get people just dancing around, just trying to have fun for the hell of it. You know. No, it's too competitive. That's the problem. Yeah. Or like. That's fun. Yeah. But yeah. I still love TF2. It's a great game. I thought yeah. the zombie infection mode was really cool. I love that. I gotta say, you know, TF2, um, they took the breaks off in terms of updates and stuff uh, for a long time. But them just going, hey, when there's a major update like Scream Fortress or the summer update or you know Smithmas Christmas this year, there'll probably be another one. Um, What's it called? Smithmas. Yeah, and you get you you can uh, gift wrap things. You can put Christmas lights on your weapons um, as like a cosmetic. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like that they were like, Hey, there's community content that's really good. We want to highlight that. Let's just make an official gamer that you can queue up for and play. And, uh, yeah. you know, when I played on summer, I did encounter some, cause I, I like just using quick play. Like I like still having community servers, but I do like the ability to be like, Hey, I just want to play these maps and then just queue up. And just yeah, play on yeah, those, which I was sure. doing here. This was just an official Valve server sort of thing. Because I, I, I still love community servers, but there's so many of those like, oh, what are they called like Skyle servers, where it's like, hey, if you pay money, you get extra health on this server, and this, and, oh, or like no. they'll be full of ads and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh uh, god, you know, um, yeah. which I, that's the sort of stuff I don't like, like pay to win stuff on community servers. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, those servers are really popular because you can pay for them. And then, they, you know, they take up a lot of the, the player base of community servers. But yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I played Zombie Infection and I played on one map as well. I'll switch over to the map. Um, I played on Spine Yard, which is a payload, one of the new Halloween uh, payload maps. Um, and I lost both sides. I played attack and I played defense <laughs> on the same server and I lost both. And I was like, damn, oh, no. sometimes it really do be like that. Yeah, I was like, I was on attack and right. I was like, oh man, this final point's really hard to take. And then uh, I played it on defense and I was, they just immediately take it. And I'm like, well, maybe I just suck. Well, there's, um, more, there's more than one person on a team. That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I'm going to say. Maybe your team uh, sucks. Yeah, but the um, the cool thing about Halloween is um, on this map, um, people can drop spell books when you kill them, which then lets you summon different abilities. So oh, that's, that's cool. the thing that happens on Halloween where um, you, you see that book on the left corner of my UI next to my health bar. Um, there's yeah. a couple of cool abilities, like one uh, summons a bunch of uh, exploding pumpkins around the uh, enemy you aim at, and then you can blow those up. And, so is uh, it random then, or is like yeah, it's random which one you get. Okay, and then okay. if you kill somebody who has it, I think they drop it and you can pick it up, sort of thing. Um, right. Uh, yeah, there's one that summons an NPC that's like a skeleton in like mafia gear with a with a, like a uh, <laughs> like a, cool. one, one of those drum guns. What are they called? You know the oh, ones like, um, um, like a Tommy gun, like a street sweeper. Yeah, like yeah. Um, I think that's what it's called, right? In TF2, I, I can't remember, but um, there's a Tommy gun. Yeah, Tommy gun, and uh, they basically go around and attack your enemies. There was one where it just summons a giant monocule. Like, there's a whole comic book about the demo man losing his eye because um, he's very insecure about losing his eye in the uh, the TF2 comic books. Yeah. And um, there's a whole 
Halloween comic book series about the demo man's eye becoming uh, haunted and you have to fight a giant version of it in one of the official maps, um, right, which is okay. pretty funny. Um, yeah. yeah, I I love Scream Fortress and I love TF2. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always great to go back and uh, play it again because um, there's new Halloween cosmetics to unlock. There's new maps to play and there's a brand new game mode to try out. And uh, TF2 never dies. TF2 never dies. And, uh, Mate, yeah. You know what? It reminds me of this, um, that game. This is the guy I was talking about. Two. Oh, okay. A mafia. Yeah. Oh, it turns out he dies as a skeleton. I, yeah. this game oh, I found a spy. Watch two. Yeah, it just upsets me that people don't know how much they would love TF2. Yeah. I say to my friends who play Overwatch 2, I'm like, you should check out TF2. And they're just like, no, I don't want to play that. <laughs> no. It's a different style, I suppose. Or a different like the theme. Oh, I had I had to pull out the Quake, the original. So there's the original in uh, which is a skin for it's a skin for the rocket launcher for the the uh, soldier, uh, but it is the Quake rocket launcher. And instead of being held on your um, on the side of the screen like it is in modern FPS games, it's held in the middle of the screen like a penis, <laughs> like it was back in Quake. <laughs> no, it's not like a penis. You oh, it okay. Chest. What do you mean? <laughs> You love to see. It. I mean, I was. I never used this game like back into this gun. Into I was like, why is it in the middle of the screen? And now I've played Quake. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to use the Quake fucking rocket launcher. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, it also in in a Halloween on the Halloween maps, um, you can drop these like um, trick or treat pumpkin candy things. Where if you pick them up, you'll get guaranteed mini crits for a certain time. I think it is. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah. Um, fun. Screen Fortress and TF2 I've been playing at this it's still spooky month Tony and I'm still enjoying yeah. Halloween and uh, next up we have Metal Hellsinger um, man okay yeah, sorry the spooky beat game yeah so it is like BPM or whatever it's like a rhythm based yeah, yeah. FPS game but to metal music so it's got like some really big musical artists I'm told as I say to my metal head friend <laughs> I'm like Oh, it's um, it's uh, Surge from System of a Down. He's like, I know who Surge is. It's like, oh, okay. Or it's got uh, Trivium or, you know, like like yeah. a bunch of, like, Metalhead stuff. Um, I'm not the biggest Metal fan, I will say. Um, I'm yeah, not really, like, a, like a big Metalhead. Stuff, like, I think I think the Doom soundtrack is sick. I love German out shooting yeah. a, a fucking demons to the Doom soundtrack. But I played the... Um, the demo for this game in a previous demo festival and I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about this game and I'm not sure how I feel about rhythm FPSs as a whole because I had only yeah. played like maybe one more after this. And I finished this game, Tony, but I got to say, I don't think I like it that much. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's my concern because I'm, I'm yet to play it. There's no demo out for it, isn't there? But we have to play it and it's like, I just don't... Yeah, think... there's a demo out for it. Um, I... It was included rhythm. with... True. So I've been playing a lot of games I've been getting on bundles or um, you know, get it for... so Ghostwire Tokyo I got um, as part of Amazon Prime. It was... Uh, got a code for that on the um, Epic Game Store. Then um, tf is free, but I bought TF2 fucking, you know, 15 plus years ago. Um, and also, um, this game was in the Humble Choices month where we had like the new uh, Dark Pictures anthology in the quarry. And I was like, you know what? My friend just played this on Games Pass. It's also in Games Pass. And right. uh, um, I'm really curious, you know, to play this game and uh, compare with him. So I was like, you know what? I'll check this out. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. So, I think the biggest complaint I have about this game is the bosses. The bosses fucking suck so much. Um, okay. So, the, the, the first boss... I'll just skip to the boss. Um, just to show you what I'm talking about. I think I might have gone past the first boss. So I'm going to skip around a little bit here. Sure, what timestamp the boss is? Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, so, Tony, do you see this boss here? Yeah. 
There are eight levels, and you will fight this boss seven times. Oh, okay. What? Yeah, oh, That's like six or seven times. But, like, there's, like, eight or nine levels, and you will fight this boss, like, every single time, the exact That's... same boss, until the final boss. And that's one of oh, my huge... Com- and the boss isn't particularly good. I I would say it's kind of a bullet sponge. It doesn't seem to take that much damage yeah. and you kind of have to just shoot it repeatedly, which I guess if you're like, oh, I'm shooting to the beat, you know, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you should make the boss go on longer so you can enjoy the song longer, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and it, it should be the length of a song for sure. Um, but it should be interesting. I I think I gotta say though, even if this boss was good, that there's that's no excuse like to have it multiple times. You need it's you like need to be it's the every it's time. the exact same layout, but it's like slightly different sometimes. It's like there's right. one that's on some like um, platforming blocks, and it uses this wind thing to push you into um, push you off the map and deal damage to you. And it's like that mechanic was just frustrating. Um, there's one where it summons copies of itself and you have to shoot the real one. But I kept going through and playing against all these bosses and then I played against the final boss and I was like, oh man, that final boss was really cool. Like it's a completely unique boss and um, it has all these unique stages and animation. And I was like, man, that it would have been cool if people got to this point without facing the same boss over and over again seven times. Yeah. Like I, I would much prefer fighting like three or four unique bosses rather than yep. seven ex- of the exact same boss, you know? Yeah, even if like some of them like sucked or something, at least it's like it's different yeah. and, and interesting. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I was playing on like the standard difficulty. I think one of my main gripes was you have to shoot on the B, which is whatever, yeah. because um, that's, the whole point. that's the whole point of the game. But in order to, so it has the execute system that's sort of like Doom Eternal. But in order, so you can see sometimes I'm hitting perfects and sometimes, sometimes I'm hitting goods, which is, you know, perfects, I think, deal more damage or fill your skill bar up quicker. I'm not 100% sure. But my problem was. Um, executes are really important because I was playing on the medium difficulty um, and you can you lose life very quickly in this game I would say and one of the main ways because there's these green health crystals in order to get health back right and if you run out of those and you're like okay I'm going to die um, you need to execute an enemy because they drop health crystals which heal you Oh, okay, right. It's the only get them from executing enemies. But the problem is, in order to execute an enemy, um, you have to perfectly execute them, perfectly on the beat. Uh, right. So it almost like completely ruins the um, flow of the game, in my opinion. Where it's like, yeah, if you're you, if you're I'm, bad, it ruins the game. It's like it's like shoot, 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 and then uh, I'm like, okay, execute. It's like miss, 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 miss as alpha, and then the enemy becomes unexecutable, and then I'm like, just right. taking a bunch of damage. Or I'll be in this flow state of attack, 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 and then um, I'll just immediately do another attack before I see that he's in the execute state, and I'll just immediately kill him before I can execute him. It's like, uh, I, okay. I don't know if, you know, this is something uh, actually, can improve. You should be vulnerable. I think if you're going to execute it, it should make the enemy invulnerable so you can execute yeah. them. That would make a lot of sense to me. And also, I do think that if you're failing, like, if the whole point of the game is, is beats, like, if you're failing, you shouldn't, like, the beat shouldn't then be harder, if that makes sense. It should be, what like, am I... you just get less rewards. I think one of my major complaints about the game is it's an FPS, right? But the guns yeah. all kind of suck. Like, they feel pretty bad to use. I think the only gun I really enjoyed using was the revolvers. Uh, the shock... I mean, it's a shooter, for God's sake, and the shotgun feels awful in this game. Um, is, yeah, is that because of the beat mechanic, or is it just like... No, just I like think it just sucks. It. Okay. I mean, it deals heavy damage close up, but a lot of the time, you're not close. I think my favorite weapons were the revolver and the, and the, uh, the sword, because... The ultimate ability of the sword was that you could use it and basically it'd be like, all right, rush mode, where it's an incredibly fast beat where you can basically just spam the attack key sort of thing. So it doesn't yeah, matter about the yeah. beat too much. Uh, another complaint about the game was it is super buggy. 
So I was about to kill a boss and then it bugged out and got stuck in the final phase, forcing me to quit out of the game, replay the entire level and then play the boss again, hoping it didn't bug out again. Um, yeah, and I think this, that this happened a couple of times and I read that it happened to quite a few people as well. Oh, hang on. But yeah. I, think um, like, you know, I love the look of this, like the setting of this pose, and like the um, yeah, the demon stuff. I kind of like that because I just I don't know. I just I don't have fun trying to do stuff to a beat. I don't know what it is. And I like, like, and again, like I, I like like, listening we, to stuff like going fast. Like I almost feel yeah, like yeah. I would prefer a game that was like an EDM where it's like super yes. fast beat. Surely if the beat gets faster, it gets easier because then you have to be less accurate with your shots. Yeah, I would assume so, but I don't know how, like, maybe that depends on the timing. But I think we've, but I was going to say is like, we spoke about this before, but I feel like I need, I, I guess I can be in a beat, but I can be accidentally in a beat. So I need to like, not hard counters, like if I'm off beat, it should still do enough damage where like, I, it's fine. I just then yeah. do better on the, I think, but but then again, like what, what, what how do you define that? Is like surely that is how it does it. It's like yeah. So but when it's so how when when, it is when the boss you. when the boss like bugged out, I was like, you know what, fuck this shit. Uh, I have to play through the entire level again. So I, I played through the entire level again, and I turned on. Wait, didn't in the save before the boss. N well, it it was saved that I was fighting the boss, but the problem was that it bugged out, so the boss wasn't respawning. Okay. That sucks. And I could die, but then I have to... I think you have to... When you die, you have to restart the whole level. Yeah, that, okay. That makes no sense. They're just like, why can't I just be... You can... You can... Um, on the on the difficult I was playing on, you could die two times and come back. And it coming choosing to revive would take a portion of your score as payment for the right. leaderboards. But the problem was I could kill myself on the environment and come back, but the boss was still bugged out. So there was yeah. not an option to reset the boss without restarting the level. Uh, it's a shame. Reload uh, checkpoint. So I was like, so I went into the options. There's actually an option called. There's actually an accessibility option that makes it so um, you don't have to shoot on the beat. It's like every beat is counted as on beat, sort of thing. Yeah, um, and so I tried a bit too too far. And I, I I tried that game. I tried that mode on because I been bugged out the level and I was like okay I'll speed run through it with that mode on and I was like huh yeah. I wonder if the game flows a lot better now that I don't have to perfectly be on beat with executes and I I, I tell you this the game is much better if you don't have to be on beat with the with yeah. the executes like it's just like I'm like do it attack 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 but attack that, execute yeah. execute attack attack it's like it's a lot smoother in my opinion I just yeah, I just, I just, I assume then be always, you're always perfect hitting normal enemies, right? With that setting on. Um, so I thought it was going to be like that, but it, it wasn't. It was like, I was like, okay, let me try spam attacking. And spam attacking was just not doing anything. You still had to try and be, okay, okay. It, it was like, a, I would say it's a lot more lenient of a window. Okay, so maybe that's the mode I need to be on to, to make this work then. Yeah, I mean, okay. and I, and I feel like I was. Because um, it still shows you if it's good or perfect or whatever on the oh, accessibility okay, mode, okay. and I was like, I felt I said this before in that demo I played for a rhythm uh, beat game, but I yeah. feel like I find it a lot easier to be on beat when it's not. Um, I don't feel pressured to be yeah. on beat. Because in that in that in that demo, we could you couldn't tell if like it was just making it easier, so like it. Or, but like I assume in this game, it's like the beat is the same and the yeah. good slash perfect so is still when, the same. So when when you're like. When you're like um, on beat, it plays the lyrics, and then when you fuck right. up, it it stops playing the lyrics. So you know, like, right. but that just throws me the fuck when I'm like, I'm on the beat, I'm on the beat, and it's like, oh, you fucked up, the lyrics are gone. It's like, whoa, that's throwing me yeah. off. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Do I like, I mean, I like rhythm games. I like, I like Trombone Champ. That's my favorite rhythm game, um, and it is yeah. actually a legitimate rhythm game. Um, I think the way that interacts is different than how other rhythm stuff works, though. Like, I feel like in to what me, sense? tapping and moving, tapping and moving a thing is different for me. Like, like I think. Well, in trombone champ, you, in, trombone champ, you tap and move. Yeah, I think the the, the act of moving though is like more is makes it a lot easier for me to like to, to visualize. I think. 
Oh, oh like there's also like shooting. they also have like the I'm gonna call it the Gears of War reload mechanic where you can get a perfect reload. I'm sure there's tons oh, of other yes. games where if you reload at an exact time, it will give I, you a quick reload. But Gears of War was I, the first game for me that I ever yeah, encountered that in. I'm pretty sure Gears of War was one of the first. If, is, that, is, is that heavily talked about at the, at the very least? You could see. Wait, let me go back. You can see there. Um, oh, it's like, oh, I want to execute this guy. I missed it. I missed it. And then the execute window goes and I just have to go back to normally uh, attacking him. That's sort uh, of the, the frustration. I mean, you, you could look at this video and go, skill issue, get good. But, you know, true. I, I tried my best. I beat, the, I, I beat the game on the, the normal yeah. difficulty and I still think this game fundamentally has a lot of um, uh, flaws. Yeah. And it, but here's the thing about difficulty stuff is like there's like a high high skill ceiling and then like what happens when you fail is like it's like it's not a linear thing it's not just like get good it's like what well, happens when you do fail like how does it feel and I think people you can still criticize that. But yeah, I look at the store page of this and I'm like, okay, I've read on the community hub people are saying they're getting bugs as well where they're um, the game's crashing and. There's some complaints, but then I go on the store page and it's like overwhelmingly positive with like almost 10,000 yeah. reviews. And I'm like, I'm starting to feel like a, maybe I, well, maybe, maybe I'm just not good. I, I miss, some I don't people know. love this game. Some people really love the feeling of this game. I, do you think there's a chance that metal heads are more willing to look past the yes. flaws of a well, game like I, this? Well, no, I think anyone who likes the core game will willing to look past flaws in general. I think yeah. metalheads really like this game. Um, a lot of people I know who like metal and rock sort of stuff love this game, and yeah. they, they tend to like hell stuff as well. It's like a kind of like a perfect combination. I mean, like I like like I think the Doom fucking soundtrack is sick. I love that yeah. shit, and yeah. there was a lot of songs on here I liked, but just overall I just. Yeah, I didn't. I think I didn't like the game. I, like, I would say it's a mediocre I, I, game at best. Like, the actual FPS right. underneath the metal is kind of bad. Yeah, but I don't think it's meant to be like a pure FPS though. I think to a metalhead, it's like I'm playing the song. If I was Does gonna separate, sense? if I was gonna separate the metal and the rhythm element from the FPS, yeah. I would say yeah. it's a pretty. It's it's like good metal music from what I can tell. And yeah. it's an okay rhythm game, and then the yeah. FPS is pretty bad. Is how I would break it down. Mm -hmm. Because like FPS none of the guns feel good to shoot. Um, yeah, they're not particularly interesting in any way. No, I don't know. I had I'd have to um, ask uh, my 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 metalhead fr friends to see if <laughs> what they think of it if they've actually played it to the end. Well, I, my, no, I, so I spoke to my review. I spoke to my f friend who's a he, he's a big music guy, and he was like, "Yeah, eh. I think I think he was like, eh, it's okay." Like I don't okay. think he he was too hot on it either. He, he wasn't as negative as me. Like I don't think he was as critical, but yeah, right. it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I I think maybe just like need more BPM games. Um, yeah, I haven't played BPM for a minute, but maybe yeah. I should give that a go and see. Maybe I should give BPM a go, and then if I don't like that, I'll give up and rhythm FPS games. Maybe yeah. that's just the play. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be what's happening. I still need to give it a go, and I think out of all of them, I'd rather. Well, I, I played give the entire game, and I didn't. Yeah. Uh, the final boss fight was way better than the, than the copy pasted boss, but overall, I don't <laughs> yeah. think I like the game. I, let me see what I. How? I think I gave it like a three, three or two, a two oh, and a half. Two and a half, yeah. 50, I think it got half a star better than Sonic Frontiers, yeah. <laughs> I would have given Sonic Frontiers like one star, but okay. I I'm gonna rework my star system at some point, so take these okay. reviews with a massive grain of salt because they're just initial gut reactions, and I haven't yeah, reviewed yeah. all of the games I've been playing. I'm, yeah, and as you do more and more, you get an idea of what each star means. So. Yeah. Um, I'm just, but, you know, 50, I think fifty percent is fine. I think yeah, I think that, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Let's move on. Uh, the next game I played was uh, Resident Evil Three. Um, so 
carrying on my uh so we've played every single resident evil remake yes. demo and every single new resident evil game so seven demo and eight demo uh played both of those and uh i played resident evil 2 uh remake last year and i fucking love that game it is so good yeah and yep. um this game kind of feels like more of the same but kind of copy pasted this okay so they both take they both take a place in raccoon city but it was like on the one point it was like oh cool i've been to this place before and i've experienced some resident evil 2 and i'm like but i was also like wait this is the exact same map that i was on before it feels kind of a little cheap in a way well yeah like there's straight up like you will go back to the Raccoon City PD. You will go outside and oh, speak okay. to Kendo at the gun shop. Um, you go to. Is the... that true? The original then is that they reused like maps. So and assets for, like... my 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 initial thing to say is I have never played the original Resident Evil two or three, so I have no idea if that's true. I I'm assuming that 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 is probably what happened. That they probably had a couple of locations that were the same, but I don't yeah. know if they reuse the assets i will say the game looks gorgeous still i still think resident evil 2 and 3 are yeah they're fucking good looking great, games great engine great games yeah yeah the the well, resident the evil engine games, is, so. is is the yeah. uh what is it the re engine i think it's called right yes yeah, it's the they use yeah. it for resident evil uh monster hunter i think and maybe yeah. st- they use it for street fighter as well is that so Dem- um demo Pro 5 uses it as well okay but yeah, um, yeah, um, Nemesis is more of a thing in this. So, Mister X was a big thing in um, Resident Evil Two, where you just be going randomly around the mansion, or no, the PD, right? As um, yeah, uh, uh, Leon and uh, Claire. And suddenly you'd be like, oh shit, I'm getting attacked by Mr. And it was like, it was like this random event that Mr. X would show up. This game feels way more like heavily scripted and cinematic. It's like, no, right. Nemesis is going to show up at this point. He's going to attack you. He's going to show up here. He jumps down, right? Yeah. Yeah. You saw it in the um, demo, I suppose. It's, it felt more scripted in the, the yeah, demo. Yeah, when I played the demo, it was, oh, I love that you can open the fridge in this game like you can in Resident Evil 7. That's a great callback to Resident <laughs> Evil 7, the fridge tech. <laughs> fridge technology. Yeah, the fridge tech is there. Who keeps a gun in the bathroom? Uh, people fighting zombies. So I think it's from the perspective of... Um, the events of Resident Evil 2 have already happened. So people have been in Raccoon City uh, oh, for right. a, yes, yes, yes. a few weeks. Because I think she has a calendar yeah. and she's like, okay, it's been like three weeks. I'm going to get out of here. I can't remember the yeah, exact she's, dates. And she's but, scared um, she's been, she's been Like when, 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 when you go back to the... Rac- like I like, again, it's all about the copy stuff. I, I like going that I went back to Raccoon City PD and I could still see the exact same welcome Leon sign hanged up in the <laughs> inside Raccoon City PD. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah. Um, so what? Oh, another big thing as well because in the uh, demo, so you see here, it's been like escape uh, Raccoon City. She's been here for almost a month. Um, worst month of my life. Um, oh, those 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 pa- those pandemic lockdowns, man. Really in- you, inside man. Um, Resident Evil Two, you play the entire game as Leon, and then you replay the entire game with different levels as uh, Claire. In this yeah. game, you play as um, Jill and Carlos, but you just switch to them at different points in the story. There's no like. Okay. replaying through the entire game as, as a character it's like it's just, okay it's here's jill's switch. perspective okay now you're playing yeah. carlos and they have their own unique inventory so uh jill has like pistols and shotguns and then carlos has like um assault rifles and um pistols because carlos is working for umbrella but he doesn't know that umbrella is the baddies you know sort of thing yeah um, it's not well known that umbrella is evil corporation oh yeah. okay 
Um, I just beat this game and I still have no idea why um, Nemesis was chasing me the entire time. <laughs> Maybe I missed something or like there's just, um, you know, something that's not explained fully without reading into the deep lore. Yeah, but... I don't know enough because, no, I can't remember. Like I, I've i looked at like lore stuff for Resident Evil, but not like super in depth. So I don't, I don't know if yeah. there's a reason in the game or not. But yeah, I don't think the, the demo started off like this. I think you were pretty much just dropped into playing the game. Sort of, but this has a more of a cinematic intro and again yeah. the the actual so game is a like lot. It's like a diner or like a convenience store you dropped in the demo, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. It's like a cafe or definitely. Oh uh, op op like openable fridges, openable down. fridges. Okay, so this is how the actual game starts just like immediately Nemesis What's is that? on your ass <laughs> and <laughs> He is for like the entire game, like literally. Why? What? So in the intro video, they just umbrella drops him into into the city, and then immediately he's just constantly chasing you. And I don't know. What the hell? It makes sense that Nemesis is just like this unkillable thing that just keeps coming, but it it really has that like Resident Evil thing, which I've come to appreciate from playing the other games is. You kill this giant, te like, fucking tentacle monster. He's like, that thing's not dead. It's coming back. And the entire game yep. is, like, killing Nemesis over and over and over and over again. Like, I think the idea that Nemesis is this indestructible awesome being yeah. that is just constantly chasing you is a cool idea and concept. But I don't know how well it works as, like, the core mechanic the of the game. game. Yeah. If it was, like, the middle section or the end section of a game, like, once it's like, oh... That's a whole game. I was not expecting to see like right from the start. That that's interesting. No, immediately like, surely, like, you have like the cinematic parts where it's like there's quick time events, Tony, uh, as well. There's quick time events in this game. But they're very uh, light. They're hate, very light. Yeah, I don't hate QTEs. I don't think there are. I don't. I don't like too. Much I can't of believe it, they I got the rights it. to um, Nemesis from Dead by Daylight in this game. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I okay. Can I just want to quickly. I expected right. Maybe like the yeah. first third of the game, you'd be like, you'd like, you'd, you'd, as from Jill's perspective, you like try and figure out what the fuck's going on. Then there'd be like hints yeah. of this. Oh, it's unstoppable mystery things no, out it, there. And then like, and they see visions. And then suddenly, suddenly, you're then up front with it. And like, oh shit! And I can't kill him. You have to keep running. But no, if he's just from the start, it makes no sense. Well, it makes sense, I suppose, but that's not what I was expecting. It feels like they kind of try to like jam as much nemesis into the game as quickly as possible because this game is a lot yeah. shorter than resident evil 2 um i wonder how re i want i need i need to i might to investigate but like I, I, I my resident evil 2 playtime is like 20 hours uh that yeah. over over two plays but then my resident evil 3 playtime i think was about five or six hours oh was so that half the time of one play. yeah so, like, this game is a lot shorter, and also Resident Evil 2 had, like, bonus content, so you could play as, um... You could play as Chunk, the, uh... The, the silent protagonist. I think his name's <laughs> Chunk, if I remember correctly. Okay. Is, he, is his name Ch Hunk? His name's Hunk, sorry. Hunk. Okay. Um, I think this guy might be from the original game. I don't know, because I haven't played Resident Evil 1. Um... But yeah, Brad Brad Vickers is in this game. I think he's in the first game because Jill is in the first game. And I remember there's this famous scene where she's about to get crushed, and he's like, "You were almost a Jill sandwich." <laughs> I hope they I hope they remake uh, Resident Evil good. One because that yeah. game could be really great in in this style. Hundred um, percent. I would I would love the whole the whole series. Be, but can I, mean, I just even, say even like six. <laughs> having this more cinematic section? And being in like more of an open city for this game, the game looks so good. I'm just seeing like, because yeah. in Resident Evil 2, you're more like boxed in. Okay, you're in the police department. You have to solve weird, um, you know, um, Greek, ancient, Roman statue head puzzles and stuff like that. <laughs> There's a lot less of that sort of stuff in this game. It is much more, this game is way more linear than the second game. It is very much there is there is still those open areas, but there is it is it feels a lot more boxed off, and again it does feel a lot 
smaller in terms of length and where you can go compared to that second game. Even though, you know, it looks bigger, it it kind of feels smaller based on okay, what you can see and what you can do. Um, right. If we'd have recorded this yesterday, like um, we're supposed to, I wouldn't have finished the entire game, but I have now because we're recording this a day later. So I can give you my full review of Resident Evil 3. And I think I like the game, but I think overall yeah. I would say I, I prefer or like Weak. Resident Evil 2 a lot more. Yeah, so you're saying it's, it's still good, but it's weaker than 2. It's shorter, it's, it's, it's weaker, it's more cinematic. Um... Like, I think it's... If you just play Resident Evil 3 and you haven't played 2, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that was a really good game. But after playing 2 and seeing where they could have gone with it, it feels like they could have gone further, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I really want to see, like, this comparison between the original game. Like, I'm, I'm wondering, like, is the structure, like, very much taken from the original game? I mean, it's still not an excuse because, like, you can still, yeah. like, change the structure, right? But... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It just seems very, very interesting to to Nemesis right from the start. Yeah, having Mister X just being like a guy who's just constantly following you throughout the game and having to avoid him yeah. was great because it would just be like, okay, I need to find the key to get to this. It's like, oh fuck, Mister X is here. I got to run and hide. And but it's like with Nemesis, it's just like, oh, I've got to empty six thousand rockets into this guy again. Okay, as like script, as a scripted thing, yeah. There was literally a boss fight where I actually ran out of ammo and had to reset the the to a checkpoint because Nemesis is not only figuratively a, a bullet sponge but literally a bullet sponge. Like right. I I legit I was fighting him shots. for like ten minutes, just emptying rockets and shit into him, and I was like, I gotta look this up because there's is there a mechanic I'm not understanding, and it was like no. You literally just have to empty rockets into him for like 10 minutes and then you move uh, on. And it was like, I think there was another boss like that in like Resident Evil 5 or 6 that was like that. And I think those are the sort of bosses I don't like where they have giant health bars that you can't see. So it's like, I have no idea if I'm missing something, you know? And they're not they're getting more damage or anything. It's like a, a visual yeah. health bar. I do think it was cool uh. when at the end, you know, you go through these different phases of being like, the idea of Nemesis being this indestructible thing and you finally get to that point where you, I, I think Jill is just like, literally throughout the entire game, she's pretty much like, oh, it's a bad day, you know, shit happens. Yeah. And then at the end, she's just like, fuck you, I'm going to fucking kill you. And she gets like this giant gun and she just <laughs> blows the shit out of Nemesis. And that's like, <laughs> it, it, that, that shit felt good because it was like, finally, yeah. this motherfucking guy's dead. Tony, I don't want to... Yeah. I don't know if I want to spoil Resident Evil 6, but I don't think anyone's ever going to play that game. I'm fairly sure Nemesis <laughs> well, comes not, back. Em, yeah. Well, you know who else comes back in 6? Um, Jill comes uh, back in 6. Ev like, I, I couldn't even describe... Oh, five as well, I, suppose, but, I couldn't yeah. even describe like half the plots of Resident Evil 6. It's like there's yeah. a weird T-Virus clone of Ada, Ada Wong and... Yeah, because like you, you like Leon's trusting her, right? It's like not even the real her. It's just yeah, and we could we could we could run all day about six. <laughs> Guys, don't play Resident Evil. As someone who's played Resident Evil Six, do not play this Wait. game. I was like, fuck yeah, Resident Evil Seven. Welcome to the family, son. Drive drive yeah, this guy yeah, over. Yeah, the bo boss, <laughs> car boss. Yeah, but yeah, um, I think overall, I think this is a strong recommend. Um, Okay. I, I still so think it's many, worth playing the game, but it does have some well, flaws many, when you compare it to Resident Evil 2's remake. How many stars are you giving this, and how many stars are you giving the last game? I don't think we had. You didn't give a stars rating the last game. Uh, I think so. I think I would give this game probably like a three and a half, and okay. then I would give a Resident Evil 2 probably like a four to a four and a half. Right. Yeah. yeah that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah. It's immune to fire. Oh, you'll set this motherfucker on fire a lot, yeah. So throughout okay. the game, so there's two modes of Nemesis. There's one where he's, I believe, 
from what I read, people were saying there is like a more intelligent version of Nemesis where he literally starts using weapons against you. This is Carlos, um, the uh, other character you play as. So he, at one point he starts using like flamethrowers and stuff against you. But then they kind of give up on that and like, okay, he's now a T-virus abomination and he'll just keep becoming like a bigger like, you know, tentacle monster that you have to fight, right? Right. Um, but yeah, that it's still got that, you know, tight inventory management, moment to moment survival horror gameplay. We're like, I need to fit in all this ammo and health and stuff and make sure I have enough to, yep. to keep going. It, it, it keeps that tension and... There, there is still some like great points of going around to new environments, but then there's like there's sections where you play as Carlos and you just have to do wave defense um, against a bunch uh, of zombies coming windows. I was like, this this just kind of feels like padding in a game that's already kind of short. Um, so I, 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 I would have liked to see a Resident Evil three that was made with the same amount of attention and care they gave to Resident Evil 2. I like to, I would have liked yeah. to see it longer and maybe, you know, take some of the padding out. More tension stuff yeah. instead of more padding or, and then and, more build up yeah. and pay off. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, I, I, the, the, the game's still good and still worth playing, but it's just comparing it to Resident Evil 2, um, I would have liked to seen a bit more, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think, I think that's like in line with what most people said, right? There's like they still liked it, just like no one as good as 2. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I finished the game and uh, the unlockables you can get in this game for having a good score is the, the Resident Evil Classic where they give you, um, you know, a really OP weapon. I think the the one, if you get like 12,000 points or something, you can get an infinite rocket launcher to play through the game with. Um, you could again, the boss fights. Yeah, infinite rocket launcher or... There's a costume you can get for Jill that gives her classic stars uniform for Resident Evil 1, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this game is still pretty fun. And then the final game to talk about was... Tony, I've been playing this game called Vampire Survivors. I don't know if you've heard about uh, it. A small game. So I played a, like, I don't know, like eight hours of Vampire Survivors at the start yeah. of this year or like at the end of last year, I think it was, whenever Vampire Survivors came out. And I was like, oh, this is really fun. Uh, but it's one of those games where I could grind this for like hours and hundreds of hours or whatever. But I was like, I kind of get the point. I'm going to try something else. But then yeah. I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone Battlegrounds as like a chill out like podcast game sort of thing. And I was like... Yeah. I've played a lot of Battlegrounds at this point. I'm like, I kind of want to try something else. I was like, you know what? Why don't I give Vampire Survivors another go? Because it's a game I can just start a run on and just quickly pause or whatever. It's like a very... Yeah. Like, Hearthstone Battlegrounds or Vampire Survivors is very, like... I say low APM. I mean, I say it's low APM, and then I intently well, stare at this and play this for, like, half an hour. <laughs> yeah. You, you can focus on other stuff if you're listening to other stuff, right? Like yeah. You can be in a Discord call and talk while still playing it, or you can listen to a podcast or watch it or listen to a Twitch stream. But yeah, this game starts out really simple and man, there's just something so addictive about Vampire Survivors where you just want to find out what's next. I think one of the biggest strengths of this game is the discoverability. It's like, I found this ring and I was like, what the fuck do I do with this ring? And then it was just like combined with, and then I found another ring and it was like, combined with Cloak Lancer. And I was like, oh, Cloak Lancer is a is a weapon I don't use very often because it just freezes enemies, right? And then I combine yeah. it with this Cloak Lancer and it becomes this really powerful weapon that halves enemies' healths. And it was like, oh, that's really cool. And yeah, because um, one of the like late game things you can do in this game is when you finish a mission, um, you uh, the Grim Reaper comes to kill you, right? But as you Probably, play more yeah. and more of the game, you can unlock revives. And um, I believe the thing that... I, the Grim Reaper scales... His health is like 10 times your player level. And the Cloak oh. Lancer upgrade is really useful because it halves his health. So it's like, if you can oh. get that to proc several times against him, 
Uh, you can actually kill the Grim Reaper before he kills you and takes you off the stage, which I was like, is a really cool like end goal. But that's like, yeah, the, the, there's so much cool shit in, in such a simple game that I understand why this game is so addictive and so fun. And I've been loving the hell out of it. Just I'm just playing a dog that farts out flowers. This is just the random character I unlocked. I was like, <laughs> how does this work? Let me just try this character and just what, what the, the dog, dog do? doing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, they've added a bunch of DLC. Like I played um, the new Whiteout game because they just did an update for this uh, like a couple of days ago called um, the Whiteout update, and it was their Halloween update where they added Christmas content. Um, so what? Yeah, there's a brand new map that is um, like a complete snow map that has like ice creatures on it. And it has, because I was streaming this to my friend who played the game, and he was, I was like, oh, what's some good skills to take? And he was like, what the hell is the defang mechanic? And I was like, oh, I played the new Christmas map, and I unlocked the ability to make it so when enemies spawn, there's a chance they don't deal damage to you? And he was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, um, that, So it is a rogue-like, where every time you finish a round, you get permanently unlock money, and then... Um, you use that money to upgrade your character over time. There's even like these golden, I've just found this out. There's these, by playing, there's these golden eggs you can get, which give permanent stats to the specific character you're playing. So there is like this infinite grind you can do. And um, I think the most beautiful way I've ever heard uh, RuneScape be des described was by my friend RuneScape Andy or Halo Andy or yeah. I don't know, whatever he wants to be called these days. But he's Halo Andy. He, he, he basically said, the reason I play RuneScape is because num bi number go bigger, number go up. Yeah. You know, when <laughs> number bigger. Yeah. You go mining for you know 100 hours and you get that level 97 to level 98 well, or whatever. It's not too cognitively difficult once you figure out what you want to do that day, and it's then just like yeah, you're just like grinding. And I'm and I I'm and gonna I'm gonna submit a brand new description for Vampire Survivors. Vampire Survivors is uh, RuneScape for Zoomers. Is how <laughs> I would describe it. Like, yeah, it's very you, good. You, you, you're you constantly wanting to see number go bigger, but it's through this, like, really distracting, like, bright colors in your face. Boo, 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 boo. Oh, if, if I keep upgrading and getting gems, I can make bigger explosion. This is, like, ADHD brain. This is so, you know, this is keeping me engaged with the game because I want to see explosion go bigger. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vampire Survivors, RuneScape for Zoomers, Tony. Such a great game. I there's did. A, there's a reason why so. Many, oh yeah, there's a reason why so many people bought the end, though, right? It's like cheap. I mean, um, actually, quite quite complex. It is always, I think, almost always in the top ten games on Steam Deck, and I know why. Like, it is yeah, just a yeah. perfect twin stick shooter. Um, yeah. It actually had they added a local cart mode recently. Um what So yeah, I could put this on my Steam Deck cool. and we could play it together. Uh, Pass, local. Part party game. Yeah. Um although I don't know how well this would work as like a party game as like multiple people because I think Vampire Survivors is kind of those games where you want to sit down and play it a couple of times just like focus on playing it for yeah. a bit to get it. I don't think you could, you could like I think with Vampire Survivors um, if it's someone who's never played the game, they're not going to be able to just sit down and immediately get it. No, no, I'm just saying. Small, or, small party and there's like... Or, like or you know, um, you might have someone like me who's very good and I'm just like popping off and doing a million explosions and then somebody else is like, I kind of don't understand what's going on. Don't worry. Um, I'll skip to where I got to towards the end. I have no idea what's happening on the screen either. Um, so don't worry about it. I'm constantly confused as well. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Uh, so, Tony, I've upgraded the whip into the blood whip. I should have taken the blue whip, because if you get the blue whip, which you unlock from another character, which you can then permanently unlock to get added to the item pool, you can then combine that with the upgraded whip, which gives you another upgraded whip. And then I've upgraded my rune tracer with the armor, which is giving me the super rain tracer. And then I've also yep. upgraded my Santa water. So it's got this, these, these giant holy waters I'm throwing on the floor, as well as a duplicator ring, which gives two 
more projectiles than every projectile I throw. And then I have this item called Candelabra, which then increases every single area of effect on every attack I do. Oh my so God. it's creating these massive... It's like, um, if you like, like, maths and just figuring out, like, the optimal way to deal damage, this game could also be really good for you. Um, uh, so you're talking about Zoom of RuneScapers again. Yeah, zoom a RuneScape. Exactly how RuneScape works. If you like optimizing numbers or optimizing damage and stuff, like, yeah, this 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 game's really engaging. I, I I've said I love Vampire Survivors before, but just going back and replaying it again to check out some of the new content they've added, I'm like, yeah, I still love this game, and I think I'm going to pick up the DLC as well because I want to check out the new DLC stuff as well. And the again, this game is so cheap; it's like three pounds. And then the DLC is like, oh, it's one pound for the DLC. It's like, well, it's, it, it feels like a no-brainer, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I, what, like a couple of cups of coffee? Or one yeah. good cup of coffee? Tony, I, I, I didn't manage to kill the Grim Reaper. I tried, I tried. I'll show you not my attempt. Yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. I need to get more power. I haven't fully upgraded my character. Um, I can't see my mouse. When, oh, there's my mouse. No, I've lost it. <laughs> I'm, legit, I'm trying to scroll the video and I can't see my mouse. I'm being legitimate right now. <laughs> there's, too, there's too much stuff. I will, I, will literally, I will literally pause the game, right? And I will go, okay, there's a chest near me. I have no idea where it is. Let me try and find it. So this, is, this is what happens. All the enemies despawn. So 30 minutes is the end. And then... Oh, okay. You spawn the um, the Grim Reaper. So I'll show you. The really interesting thing is, um, so with weapon evolution, you have passives and you have uh, weapons. And once you fully upgrade your weapon to level 8, that's when you can combine it with your passive to get the evolution of the weapon. But you can only get the evolutions from killing mini-bosses that drop chests. And only after about 10 minutes can you get that. So sometimes... I'll kill a mini boss, but I won't pick up the chest because, like, I want to level up my weapon because then when I pick up the chest, yeah. it will evolve my weapon rather than giving me a random level on one of my random passives or items. So, there's actually this game starts out super simple and then it becomes like super engaging and has a lot of depth to it. It is one of those games that's easy to play, hard to master. Yeah. I've got, I've got extra that, resins, I've got extra. How are you getting killed by the Grim Reaper? Is he just like coming towards you? Just like he just runs at you and kind of one shots you. I don't. There may be a build where you can get really tanky. I mean, I have full armor and full um, extra health on this build. Um, okay. I think maybe I. There's probably a higher DPS build again. Um, so with this build, um, I can't. I haven't figured out how to unlock how to evolve the flowers. Um, because the flowers are a unique weapon of this dog, so I don't know how to evolve those yet. And I also didn't evolve um, the whip fully, so there's a chance that um, I can figure out how to evolve those and I'll get more damage. Also, I haven't maxed out the might mechanic, which gives you extra damage. Uh, but yeah, I unlocked this new character. And you just, you unlock new characters and you just, you know, th there's just still so much shit to just unlock and play around with, right? It yeah. is very engaging, right? It, oh, so it's this is way the. More complex and in -depth than I, I don't know if you know. like this or not, but um, given that it's a single player game that, that you don't have any my transactions in, every time you yeah. open these chests, they're set up like gambling slot machines. Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. If it's if it's free stuff and it's not critical. But it is that like dopamine thing where it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. When you open these, you'll get. The longer it goes on, the more money you get. And then sometimes there's epic versions of it, which give you three items. Yep. And sometimes there's uh, legendary ones that give you five items. And there's also... Oh, yes. um, there's a luck mechanic where you can actually get a passive item called luck, which increases your chances of getting those, which is pretty cool. And yeah. there's some weapons that scale on luck as well. There's like... Yeah, there's there's a lot of in-depth stuff in, in this game. Um yeah, I think when it comes to like like chance boxes, like the, the devil's in the detail. Like it's like how it's like implemented. Hopefully, yeah, YouTube so. isn't destroying this. I remember watching Asmogold well. stream of playing this game, and it was like <laughs> you get to like this point in the game, and it's like two bit rate. Yeah, it's it's getting it's pretty intense for for Discord to handle. So. Well, you're seeing at seven twenty thirty on YouTube, it'll be fourteen forty p sixty. Um, so I hopefully higher, that's enough bitrate. It's also it's also a higher bitrate than YouTube can much. Like I think it's double the bitrate than what Discord can handle. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I don't have Discord merch, so Tony always gets the worst version of these yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, you know what though? The worst version is when you're actually playing it. I don't understand, but like, would you stream the video of you playing a game? It's like better than the directly streaming at, the game of itself for me. At least you're getting the AV1 encoding, which Discord has. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, it has actually been slightly improved like since then. Like, is it the most increase? Yeah. That's the end of uh, Halloween 3. And I think there's going to be a Halloween 4 because I've just started playing another Halloween there's, game. So there's one more spook week of Halloween, guys. Spooky month is still here. I'm going to be playing yeah. some more spooky games. I think I'm playing Super Adventure Hand and then I think I'm going to try The Evil Within. So look out for those games. Oh, yeah. Evil Within. Yeah. Another Tango Work spooky game. So I'm going to check that out. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.